What's up, everyone? Welcome to Bill Bronze and Dragons. I'm your host, Bill Bron Bafflestone. So today we're having another episode of my Deep Dive series. Today, looking at the Artificer First Level Ability, Magical Tinkering. So, believe it or not, I don't spend 24 hours a day on Dungeons and Dragons, and when I'm out in the real world, I will actually often say, you know, I play Dungeons and Dragons, and one thing I've learned about life from Dungeons and Dragons is that you never turn down a plus one brooch. I don't care if you're plus 37. You take that plus one brooch and you take it to plus 38 because life is about incremental improvements as our builds. A little improvement here, a little improvement there, and they all start to stack up. And next thing you know, you're looking down at everybody else, which is, you know, what you want to do uh, as a sports metaphor, not you know, like as a social thing. Come on, guys. Uh, <laughs> so in any case, I had the first session of my new campaign today and rolled out my new Artificer character, Scipio Scorpianus. And so I took a deep look at magical tinkering because it looks kind of like a ribbon, right? But here at Bill Bronze and Dragons, we like to take ribbons and strangle our enemies to death with them. And I wanted to figure out how I could really maximize magical tinkering and make it work to my advantage because I'm a level one artificer in a low magic setting. And I really want to be able to eke every plus one brooch, so to speak, out of my character that I can. That to me is what optimization is all about. So I want again to thank the boys in my Patreon Discord. They are always a great help. If you'd like to support the channel, please like, subscribe, comment, share, and check out the Patreon. And oh, check out these new uh, t-shirts that I'm working on, right? They look pretty cool. And I'm going to be doing one for my daughter Adelina's uh, little catchphrase, levitate to meditate. That's gonna be adorable, right? And I'm gonna do a little logo with her you know, a little yoga pose. Yeah, so I'm working on the t-shirts. Uh, they are going to be for patrons and, you know, I guess you could buy them if you really want. Uh, but yeah, exciting stuff going on here at Bill Browns Dragons. In any case, without further ado, let's take a deep dive into magical tinkering. So to begin, we'll talk about a few general points. It does require thieves or artisan tools, but the artificer does start with thieves tools. That said, if you are using gold buy to start, then you're going to have to make sure to pick up the right tools. It's interesting to combo with the Rock Gnome Tinker ability, just thematically, and they offer different things, so you can combine them and get even cooler toys. And I think this is a pretty fantastic, always-on, unlimited-use ability with multiple applications. You can have up to your Intelligence mod in items, and while they're not that powerful, again, all of this stuff adds up. In a lot of ways, it's kind of like a poor man's, but more versatility magic mouth, which is itself a fantastic spell that artificers get at fifth level. But see my deep dive series video on magic mouth for more info. There are some synergies with magical tinkering and magical tinkering can create light. Light creation of any sort is always fantastic if you don't have dark vision. And even at five foot radius of bright light and 10 foot radius of dim light, it can come in very handy. Do talk to the DM about the grid origin point of the five foot radius. It'll cover either four squares or nine squares, depending on how he rules it. So get that figured out. And here's a little tip that by itself is going to make this video worth the time it takes you to watch it. Note that rules as written, the light created by magical tinkering defeats the darkness spell because it's not produced by a spell. If you look at the description of darkness, it says that if any of this spell's area overlaps with an area of light created by a spell of second or lower level, the spell that created the light is dispelled. Magical tinkering is not a spell, folks. It will defeat darkness. Now, this is rules as written. All of this, of course, is subject to DM interpretation. He might think that that is too overpowered for an artificer ribbon, but rules as written, it defeats darkness. I am also compelled to point out that if you use magical tinkering on a weapon, it might become magical. It doesn't really say that it does, so I would lean towards it not doing so, but I can see the argument, right? It is technically now a magical weapon, which means it may be eligible to use with battle ready, and it may even bypass non-magical bludgeoning, piercing, slashing resistance or immunity. 
Both or either of these is obviously at DM discretion, and personally I think that is pretty overpowered, but it's not up to me, and I am not here to voice my opinion on how your game should be run. I'm here to point these things out, and if they are applicable to your game, then you can take advantage, because it's up to your DM. If your DM says that you can do it, then you absolutely 100% should do it, right? So now let's talk about some more specific ways to use magical tinkering. It can offer advantages in the interaction phase and in regards to your personal aesthetics for role-playing. So first let's point out that it can put a picture on an object. It doesn't say anything more than that. As I read it, these pictures can be of photographic quality and of anything imaginable. Obviously this is up to DM interpretation, but to me there's no reason that you can't. And so therefore, we can make our garments and armor and clothes look ridiculously cool. Like, we can make our armor look like a starry night sky with like a comet on the chest. Or you could look really kooky with a hat that shows you're a mood via emojis or something. There are tons of ways to put a really cool personal spin on this and make your characters shine. You can always produce pleasant odors, so for example, your PC can always smell like roses or sugar cookies or whatever. That's pretty sweet. And you can produce verbal messages and nonverbal sounds. Can we say theme music? Dun, dun, dun. So dramatic. Just think of like Darth Vader walking in and it's like dun, 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 dun. Right? Or if you're into pro wrestling, you know how all that works. And that could just be hilarious. You can use it during interactions, like walking to a bar and just strut in with your theme music. Or you can spice up your combats and just, you know, have a fun little interaction with magical tinkering. That can be cool. The light thing is a glow, and that can be pretty aesthetically pleasing. You can create impressive, but not overpoweringly gaudy jewelry and clothes and stuff. And if you're like a Casanova, you can record messages onto a coin in a flashy way and maybe seduce somebody. I was thinking you could maybe leave it as a tip for your waitress and it tells her how beautiful she is when she taps it. You know, I'm going to be always looking for opportunities to do cool little things like this with magical tinkering. And now let's talk about the utility. You can get some crazy good utility out of magical tinkering. So again, it can create pictures at will, so we can communicate visually with no common language. One of the best friends that I had growing up actually met my ex-wife's cousin when they were both visiting us in New York, and neither of them spoke each other's language, and they fell in love and got married. It's pretty crazy, the stuff that you can say without words and just through gestures and pictures and stuff. You can also create written words and then communicate silently so nobody can overhear you. And you can also record sounds that are whispers, and it doesn't have a very big area of effect, so you can pass on messages via whisper that can't be heard easily. If you actually whisper, I think there's like a range of 15 feet or something, where with these, it's only 5 feet. The artificer can use magical tinkering to create sequential pictures of photographic quality similar to slideshows. So this thing is basically PowerPoint. And I hope we all know that PowerPoint is amazeballs. Oh my god, funny little aside. When I was a kid, I used to give these, you know, presentations, but there was no PowerPoint 50 years ago, and we had to literally draw them out on these giant poster boards and draw straight lines with a ruler and then do it in pencil and then go over it in ink and then erase everything. And it was so much work. And at college, in my senior year, I had to do a presentation, and I did it the same way I did it in second grade. And afterwards, one of my classmates came up to me and was like, dude, have you ever heard of PowerPoint? <laughs> Which I hadn't heard of at that point. And then I use it all the time in my consulting career. Oh my God, PowerPoint is amazing. I actually use it in all of these videos, right? You can communicate complex ideas much better with PowerPoint. Now I do want to point out, Minor Illusion is actually better for this because there's no limit on the objects that you can create, but we don't get that. Plus hours last indefinitely. And we can combo ours with sounds without being illusionists. So I am digging Magical Tinkering as a faux PowerPoint. It's also interesting to combo with Keen Mind to kind of share your eidetic abilities. You can recreate anything that you remember, which is everything. And using Magical Tinkering, we can instantly reproduce maps and such, and include little icons that move around on that map. Very tactically advantageous. It's almost like a real-time battle display or whatever. 
Speaking of which, we can take aerial perspectives for a tactical advantage. Now, obviously, you need to get into the air somehow with like a levitate or use your familiar or a homunculus or something. All of this is up to DM interpretation, of course. But still, to get a bird's eye view and get actual layouts of battle formations that you can then mark up and plot your own attacks and stuff, that's very tactically useful. You can also use magical tinkering to take snapshots of crime scenes, of puzzles, of clues, of inscriptions, of all the crazy stuff in D&D that we might want to have a snapshot of. We can show pictures of a person that we may be trying to locate or gain intel about way better than a description. We just show them a photo. We can use magical tinkering to create forgeries of any painting, any contract, any bona fides, any signature, all sorts of really cool uses that you can do if you're that deceptive, shady sort of character. You can mark passages as signals to others or reminders of the path that you've taken if you're in a labyrinth or some such. And here's an interesting one. You can create art performances to make some money. I mean, you can tell amazeball stories if you can, with an action, change images and sound and create PowerPoints. You can tell stories. You could do musical performances, maybe even really good ones if you combo it with like performance skill and instrument skills. And you could even use the images as a template for more permanent art. Just kind of go over the top of it with paints or whatever. And maybe you could eke out a living. Maybe you could eke out the favor of a queen or something. I feel like if we are opportunistic and keeping our eyes open, there are some really cool ways to use that aspect of the ability. Magical tinkering can possibly work as an anti-theft protocol on pouches in your backpack, similar to how magic mouth works. Now, not necessarily this is up to the DM because magical tinkering, you have to tap it. Whereas Magic Mouth, you can set any triggering condition. So do they tap your pouch if they try to pick your pocket? Maybe, I don't know, it's up to your DM, but you can ask. You can also use it to create the image of a coat of arms or other insignia on the PCs. And this can aid in interactions, in subterfuge, or in infiltration. Put the right coat of arms on the armor of your party, and maybe you can just walk right into that castle. You can use magical tinkering to send short messages over great distances when combined with your familiar a homunculus or some other kind of delivery mechanism. You can record certain phrases in an unknown language to ease interactions. Obviously, you would have to get some help from someone who speaks that language to set it up. But once you do, you can activate it when you get close to the creatures and then say something, for example, like, we come in peace and seek to bargain in Orcish or Abyssal or whatever. And you can have a whole bunch of them with all sorts of different messages. Obviously, you can only create a few on the fly, but you are pretty smart. You know how to write. You can write down the phrase that you're supposed to say and then record it on the fly. You can record phrases or sounds onto rocks or whatever and use them as distractions. For example, now everyone attack or the sound of footsteps or something. It's not that loud, so you have to manage that, but you can still do it. Realistically, you can say up to 30 to 50 words in a six second message if you talk fast. You could use codes instead of languages and then maybe your party understands what's up and nobody else does. It can be like a signal or something. And you can place these with various methods like Mage Hand, Unseen Servant, Telekinesis, all these different ways. You can use magical tinkering to create forbidding sounds that would encourage people to stay out of the cave that you guys are holding up in or stay away from the door while you're doing your dirty work behind it. It can be things like ominous growling, the sounds of a bear eating something not yet dead. It can be like, you know, animals mating or just something that people are going to be like, uh, I don't want to go in there, thanks. You can enchant earplugs with annoying sounds like nails on a chalkboard and use them for soft torture. Obviously, this is going to be up to your DM because there's no specific rules. But in real life, if you do that to somebody, they are going to crack pretty quick. And you can also subject them to nasty odors and it doesn't have to be one or the other. You can do both. So I feel like that is a pretty strong approach in terms of intimidating people. Maybe you can talk your DM into advantage on intimidation or something. And you can combo it with sleight of hand. You can slip objects onto other people and you can make them smell disgusting. And that can provide an interactions debuff. You can prank people. You can embarrass or humiliate people. All of those things can be useful options in the right scenario. And note that this combo is also with the invisible mage hand that you can get if you are telekinetic or an arcane trickster. And man, that could be really super hilarious. 
You can also use magical tinkering to light up rocks and then manipulate them with your familiar or homunculus or mage hand or whatever to gain a tactical advantage because you can light up enemies while you remain in darkness. This confers a huge advantage. You can see them, they can't see you, you're attacking at advantage, they're attacking at disadvantage, you're going to be pouring over their bodies looking for loot in about three rounds. It's a lot like a concentration-free dancing lights, although there's a, another component to this that you need to fill in somehow, moving it around. You can also drop them down pits or cliffs or whatever to see what's down there, or you can throw or shoot them down hallways to see what's down there. You could potentially light up arrows and bolts and then hit an enemy so that the arrow sticks to them and then now they're persistently lit up. And that can be awesome against shadows or other creatures with light sensitive abilities. This one is up to DM discretion, of course. I'm taking a few liberties with the rules as written, but if it's a rule of cool DM, that might work. Never hurts to ask. You can use magical tinkering to deceive people by selling them magic items, quote unquote, or flashy toys that later become mundane. And this can be anything from something that's just lit up or you tap it and it has a cool message or a cool musical sequence or whatever. And you sell it for a pretty penny and then you transfer the infusion to something else later and you're all good. And they're all bad. <laughs> you can also manipulate card games. Get those four aces anytime you need them. You can change wanted posters and be like, uh, the reward on this guy is a thousand gold, right? And it was like a hundred. Or you can change menu prices, I mean, you name it, you can do all sorts of crazy stuff with that if you are of that kind of deceptive sort. More simply, you can just tag your property and that way you know it's yours. And as far as quality of life, you can enhance your sleep or ambiance with soothing sounds, a la ASMR, or just maybe you're on a date and you want like some nice music, that could be pretty smooth. And finally, the last thing I thought that you might be able to do with magical tinkering is you can sell aromatherapy services. And who knows? I mean, in a world where horses are pooping on every corner, someone might be like, you can make me smell nothing but roses and mountain breezes and the smell of bacon for like an hour. Uh, okay, I'll be happy to let you into the castle. Just hook me up on those sweet smells, bro. So that's it. That's my deep dive into magical tinkering. It is a surprisingly useful ability, I think, for something that, you know, on the surface can seem like a ribbon. You can definitely get that whole <laughs> die thing going with magical tinkering. I think it offers a ton of utility, a ton of uh, really cool, like aesthetic personal role playing stuff. And the killer app is that it defeats darkness. Magical tinkering defeats darkness, folks. You heard it here first. So regardless, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Are there any ways of using magical tinkering that I forgot about? This has been Bill Bronze and Dragons. I'm your host, Bill Bronze Bafflestone. See you next time.